Hi, I'm Alan Yun from the University of Hong Kong. I'm now the president of Hong Kong Association for Education, Communication and Technology. Let me give you a little bit about our, the history of our, of our association. The Hong Kong Association for Communication and Technology established in 1989 by a group of academics from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Hong Kong Polytechnic University, and Hong Kong Baptist University. Today we are very lucky to have an opportunity to interview the founding president, Dr. Liu Yang. So then, Mike, would you like to ask the first question? Okay, I'll be glad to, yes. Uh, I'm, uh, this is Mike Spector, I'm a past president of AECT, and it's been my pleasure to have met uh, Dr. Liu Yang last several years that I've been working here in Hong Kong, and I was here for the 25th anniversary celebration in December. I wonder if we could start by you explaining what the Hong Kong AECT logo represents. Yes, uh, it's very Chinese oriented in terms of the philosophy of it. As you can see, uh, there are four lines under the boat. This is the boat. Uh, and then you can see the, something like Hong Kong. Can you see Hong Kong? This toy? Oh, okay. Hong yes. Kong. And the AEC. HK. Okay, Hong I Kong, see it now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So in the, uh, in the boat, right? Yeah. And the four line. The four line means the four waters. Within the four seas, we're brothers and sisters. Therefore, our association, AECT, is like a family. The Hong Kong AECT is such a big family. All the families get together in different international uh, perspectives. Yeah. So I, I like it. So uh, AECT is our family. And my family too, and I'm glad to be a part of it yeah, and yeah, to have right. met you. I wonder if we could start at, by you giving us an overview of uh, who you are, where you, where you currently work, uh, and uh, what you've been doing recently. Yeah. Uh, I'm Leo Pak Kong Yam. You call me Leo. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. I've been in the field for a number of years, over 60 years. I was a teacher of English and mass media and a developer of tertiary teacher education, especially these past 20 years. Right. Uh, I just retired from the Hong Kong Zhuhai College of Higher Education, where I have been the director of uh, and professor of the uh, staff educational enhancement and development program for over ten, ten right. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, Leo, could you describe your career path, educational institutions, different jobs, places of employment? Yeah, I've uh, switched to the older history. In 1967, before I went to University of Wisconsin from Hong Kong to further my studies in media and theater arts, I was a full-time English teacher, a freelance actor and actors training lecturer, and I was once the director of the Actors Training Center uh, for Shaw's Brothers Studio. Yeah. Mm. Some years ago, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in Hong Kong, during the 80s and the 90s, uh, I guest hosted a number of radio and television programs, mainly on life and living, mm -hmm. public speaking, interpersonal communication, and other related areas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For all these years, uh, in different periods of time, I taught audiovisual communications, television, photography, non-verbal communication, interpersonal communication, in a number of universities, uh, including the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Columbia University Teachers College, University of Pittsburgh, and the University of San Francisco. Uh, again, in 1992, after having worked at the Chinese University, of Hong Kong for 16 years. I changed to work as the director to initiate the uh, staff development program at Ling Nan College. Now it's called University. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After my retirement from Ling Nan College in 1998, 
I was invited to be the chief consultant of the staff development program at Baptist University, Xi'an College, and then uh, Zhuhai College of Higher Education at various times until 2015. Now, I uh, conducted many communication, leadership, management, and public speaking training workshops over, over the years. My career path is very diversify as you can see. Absolutely. Yeah, right. In a nutshell, it's all about education, communication, and technology. I have the sense that you think that communication is the thread that ties everything together. That's right. Yeah, yeah. All these years, I'm a nut of communication. Yeah, I think there's truth in that. Yeah. I'm wondering how you got interested in the field in the very beginning. Now let's talk about history. Okay. 1955, I started using audiovisual media, such as film, recording flashcards. You may laugh at me, Leo, you use flashcards? But it's 1955. <laughs> <laughs> Display board, slides, overhead transparencies, field trips, role play, and drama to teach as an element, elementary school teacher. All I was excited and ex interested in teaching was to make teaching interesting, exciting. Imaginative, playful, facilitating uh, interpersonal communication. When I worked as a director of the television studio and as a doctoral student at Columbia Teachers College in 1969, I got fascinated at the mystery of communication. That's why you uh, it, 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 it intercept that you you were also uh, a friend of of communication, yeah. see? But as our audiovisual communications and technology forerunner, James Street put it this way in 1953, he said, there's a literature of the film, of photography, of museum, of dramatization, etc. There's also the literature of educational method and curriculum. There's a literature of educational psychology, of social psychology, of social anthropology. There is a literature of art and design. Finally, and perhaps most important, there is the growing literature of communication. There it is again, communication. I notice you have yeah. some of the books you contributed to the literature yeah, on the yeah, desk here. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Could you show us some of your books? Yes, uh, I published four books, most of them uh, are in Chinese, but I, I can tell you the name. Okay. This All is right. called the uh, communication again. Communication. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> communica communication. <laughs> yeah. Communicative Poetry 300. Yeah. And this one, Education, Communication and creati uh, Creativity. Yeah. Strategies and practices. And this one is an old one, published in 1983. Mm. It's called Communication, Education, Technology, mm. Practice yeah. and Theory. I realize this is one of the popular textbook. Uh, Still in use, yeah, probably. Uh, at, at that time, particularly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, uh, I printed 6,000 books. They all sold out. Oh. Uh -huh. Within about five or six years. Now I can't find one anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. This one is about oral communication, the power of oral communication, talking about interpersonal communication, uh, public speaking, and uh, eloquence. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. right. So now, apart from James Finn, uh, what were the other major ideas or approaches that stimulate your professional growth? Well. I was talking about my experiences in the States, in Hong Kong, being, being an actor and all these uh, experiences. All these experiences nourished me uh, to become a uh, dedicated media communicator. Uh, Great. Yeah, besides, I know uh, the, uh, the emphasis on communication is clear. And I'm wondering who besides Jane Finn has had the most impact on your professional growth? through these different fields, uh, 
role, you know, being an actor, yeah. doing poetry, doing stand-up uh, advising, and then educational technology. Yeah. I strongly believe that technology itself cannot manage to teach is human in the essence of communication that would facilitate learners to learn mm. and make uh, learning education come to life. Mm. Now, Dr. James Finn, as I told you earlier, advocated the communication literature and Dr. David Pearl, he introduced his SMCR, that's Sender Message Channel Receiver Model, mm -hmm. that right. influenced by uh, professional growth. And Dr. Colin Cherry, a management and communication authority in the United Kingdom, yeah. asserted that the products of technology, mm -hmm. uh, such as <clears throat> techniques and machines, did not have any power by themselves. Their power purely hinged on the communication attitude and confidence of man. I agree. And uh, another one who influenced me a lot uh, is Dr. Will, uh, Wilbur Schrem, uh, who inspired me in terms of his mass media and communication research. In particular, he promoted ETV and communication studies for the underdeveloped countries. He was also the first consultant to come to Hong Kong and China. Mm -hmm. Through the introduction of Professor Timothy Yi to develop mass media studies at the Chinese University of Hong Kong mm -hmm. and other universities in China. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you may have not have heard of this uh, expert in visual communication. No, I haven't. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Cole Nathan Nobler, yeah. oh, a, no, a, a visual communication psychologist stimulated by critical thinking, by his three key dimensions mm -hmm. of perception, uh, experience, emotion, and intelligence. Now, you know that? People see what they want to see, what they are prepared to see. People see the same thing differently. We should not judge a person mm -hmm. by one-sided view. We should see from different angles, critically, using your critical thinking based on the, the process of the three dimensions in perception. I want to talk about my uh, advisor okay. at Columbia Teachers mm -hmm. College. I must thank Dr. Phil Lang of the um, Columbia University Teachers College for his untiring method and make me what I am and insightful questions and ideas in supervising me in my doctorate research in open circuit ETV decision making, in programming in the realm of curriculum design. Mm -hmm. All the above professors had the most impact on my personal growth. And today, the value of communication, in particular, the human communication aspect, theory and practice of learning process of the learner, has yet to be explored and to be developed. Regardless, much emphasis has put into the electronics of the computer, where technology, which has overridden its adverse effect of the users. I have a little verse to share with you. I know you, you like know. poetry. I've read some of your poems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, information is a discipline of culture, value, and technology. If we plan to use it wisely, with a critical mind so sublime, it will provide us with needs, interests, and convenience, transcending space and time. If we use it aimlessly, without discretion, having no humility and creativity, communication and passion, information will make people indulge in fantasy and weaken their positive passion. Last, information will become a heap of harmful resources. So true, information, we are sometimes scared of you. Information, we are in need of you. Oh, I, can I follow up? I just, yeah. I, I just had a thought about the three dimensions of perception. 
experience emotion and yeah. intelligence. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned there's been a lot of research. Uh, it seems to me that most of the research is about each one of those separately as opposed to the interactions of all three. And I wonder what you think about that. Yeah, well, I think if, just say for instance, if I, I like you, I might experience, I've known people like you who wear beards. Yeah. <laughs> when I see beards, I know that he's a good guy. Ah. <laughs> so that's from my own experience. Yeah. Ah. You see? Number two, I match it with my emotion. You are nice to me. I'm nice to you. We, uh, we chat very uh, mm -hmm. friendly. So my emotion is with you. So it is positive. And thirdly, intelligence. Oh, he's, he's a really good guy. I've used my uh, imagination, my thinking, to analyze, see if you're a good guy. And finally, I use these three dimensions together. Mm. Finally, oh, my spectrum is a good guy. Oh. <laughs> I go into my experience. It's not yeah. one-sided. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I can agree more. But uh, how would you describe your research interests and aspiration when you first start your career? How did they change with time? You know, when I first started teaching, I had already realized that teaching was a playful game using role-playing, dramatization, pictures, slides, and all mm -hmm. the as all the, all the all, all the visual aids. The one-to-one face-to-face -to -face teaching was warm. And I should have said, has been warm, uh, intimate, and uh, interpersonal. However, as time changed, the e-learning web or distant learning modes and other forms of information technology systems do not seem to be humanistic mm -hmm. and uh, passionate. It lacks warmth and face-to-face -face interaction and human touch, especially for the children. However, I'm satisfied with my teaching career mm -hmm. in the use of educational communications and technology, though limited to the use of more sophisticated information technologies. But however, I cite uh, a verse, I, I cite some, some paragraph for you to uh, appreciate. Uh, Edward Murrow, have you heard of? Of course, a very distinctive oh, yeah, voice. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's uh, the, the journalist. Yes. Mm. Yeah, the forerunner of broadcasting journalist. One said, the instrument, maybe we call it now, education technology, can teach. It can illuminate. Yes, it can even inspire, but I can do so only to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it's merely lights or chips or wire in a box. I agree with you. Yeah. Do you yeah. agree with you? I do. Yeah, yeah, I exactly. remember his voice. It's very distinctive. Yeah. Edward R. Murrow. Uh, I'm wondering uh, what your current interests are, research interests. I know we mentioned the four books already, but you've done a lot of other things as well. Yes. Uh, besides all the books that I published, and I have another article, uh, in a manuscript, maybe a book, uh, is called The Humanistic Approach in a Bicultural Communication. Mm -hmm. It's being edited uh, with mm -hmm. my friend, Dr. Tim Abraham. Oh. So, uh, other, other than that, I've produced many uh, 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 videotapes. Uh, uh, these tapes are concerned with the tertiary teacher education training. They were funded by the Government University Grants Committee. I, being the project director, he was my assistant yeah. in this project. He did a lot for us. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I still remember that, that series of DVD and um, these, uh, VCDs, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, I just named some of them because some of these uh, uh, presenters are very famous. I'm right. Uh, the first one, uh, Pure Review and Observation of Teaching, presented by Professor Brian Cook of the University of Hong Kong. Motivational Design for Learning. Presented by Professor John Keller, I think you know him. I know him. He mm -hmm. also retired oh. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of Florida State University. Learning Objectives and Objective Tests. Presented by Professor Ronald McBeath. I think you know him. So, yeah. uh, also of St. Jose University. Nonverbal Communication 
and body language in communication, in education, presented by Leo Yam, me, from the Chinese University. I know you know him. I think I do. <laughs> and nine others. Wow. Uh, recently, I produced two more uh, videotapes before I retire from Zhuhai uh, College of the Higher Education. These two are the art of effective presentation in communication process. And the other one is communicating beyond words. Mm. Now, the technology changes. While the psychology human learning process remains unchanged, but I think you agree with me. I do agree with you. Yeah, that. it needs to explore further the learning process. Absolutely. Because yeah. the technology is getting advancing. Uh, it's so hard to keep up with the technology, technology that we still right. don't understand the learning process yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. very well. Yeah. So what do you think uh, have been some of those greatest accomplishments of your career so far? Why? Well, mm -hmm. During the past 50 years, I would say to myself that I have not any greatest accomplishment in my career. But I must admit that the Hong Kong AEC colleagues like Alan Yid, my good friend here, Joseph Lam, Kevin Yang, and Tony Lam uh, from uh, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University oh. mm -hmm. and China ACT Lee Kedong and others had helped me to develop the Hong Kong AECT, a made it an organization with limited resources in a small region like Hong Kong that has bridged the educational communication workers between Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, and the United States, of course, and Southeast Asia from the year 1990. Yeah. Well, I have some pictures to show to you. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah, there's a lot of good memories in that conference in 1990. Yeah. Uh, it's almost 20, some 25 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back, 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 uh, back a little bit to the history. In 1990, I, I was awarded the Robert T. Kiefer ah. uh, International Award. The, yeah. At the ACT yeah, annual ACT con award. convention, I was there. Yeah. And uh, they presented the award to me uh, some years ago, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, the 1990. Yeah. 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 Uh, that, that is, if I would say, I would consider it a little accomplishment. A major accomplishment, uh, yeah. plus all the students you had over the years. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm wondering about your time in the field of instructional design and technology what you regard, you've mentioned some of these already, as your most significant developments. Uh, you've mentioned the DVDs or the videotapes and the books. And yeah. I don't have much research in IDT, but I feel that the definition of instructional design had aroused the interest of the academics to talk about it mm -hmm. for some time. I think you know it. Yes. It is states. Mm -hmm. Many people write, uh, wrote articles and, uh, to attack it or to go for it or to complement it, you know. So many articles, especially in, in uh, the scholars in China. But how are we going to apply it in organizing, as they say, planning, designing, utilizing, assessing the curriculum in this highly technological age? That's a different story because the technology has been advancing mm -hmm. right. uh, a lot. See? So how are we going to do it? define it. Uh, do we need to define the domains of instructional objectives, cognitive, affective, and behavioral, where you teach a topic or lesson? Nowadays, I find that most teachers do not use this model when they design uh, their, their lesson, when they write their lesson plan. They do not use these three cognitive, uh, these three uh, domains, cognitive domain, psychomotor domain, uh, and uh, affected domain. Right. They don't use it, just, just just get from their head and then they write it. So I think we have to think about, about that. You have to have influence on that. Yeah, I agree. When I was teaching, before I came into this field, I taught philosophy yeah. and I just taught whatever was in my head. I had no sense of design, of mm -hmm. a structured process or a discipline. 
what I learned from Gagne and Merrill and these other people working on projects, and it's made a difference in my teaching. So I think it's important to have a clear idea of what it is you want to teach, who the learners are, the structure process. Yeah. I think that's important. So it's like for Jesus, when you mm -hmm. teach water, yeah. the cognitive is its H2O, the formulation, the formula. And then the uh, factor domain is that we have to, to save water, save your life to a life, your, your your body is something like 70% of your body is, is water. So you love yourself. That's appreciate. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate yourself. And that's a factor to me. And psychomotor to me, you have to save water. Don't, lose, don't, don't uh, use water aimlessly. So very easy example is that I usually use this example to uh, teach these three uh, domains yeah. in uh, instructional objectives. Yeah. Mm. Now, as a student of you, uh, during my master's student in education, communication, and technology, I must say you have done a lot of things. Uh, you have done a lot of uh, you know uh, study, and lots of practices, uh, video production, in television, in uh, communication, and educational technology. So, how do you want to be remembered within the profession? Well, I'm not. Uh that, uh, what do you call it, that the big person that to be remembered. But if I want to be remembered within the professionally, I may humbly call myself Liu Yao, the student communicator. <laughs> Always communicate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good, master communicator. Well, we usually conclude these uh, interviews with a question that takes us back to AECT and about your favorite fond memories of uh, AECT and anything else you'd like to share uh, at the end of this interview? Yeah, I, let me share some of my, uh, my thinking yeah. that I have always been in my mind for over 25 years hmm. since I became a, a, a member of AECT. Now, AECT has always since uh, 1968 has always uh, impressed me as a family oriented professional organization. Mm -hmm. I may have some pictures to show you. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. uh, scholars like Clem Chow, do you know Clem Chow? I didn't know him. Yeah, no. those, those were the days yeah. Yeah, in, in, in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. He was very active. He was the president of the international division. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim Chow, Dick Connell, everybody knows I him. I know Dick, of course. Ron McBeath, Gerald Kemp, the big, yeah. the big person yeah. in uh, instructional design. Uh, John Hepper now becomes his old friend. <laughs> I invited him uh, to come to Hong Kong to give lectures. Uh, when I met him at the uh, AECT convention, oh. yeah, I invited him to come over. Later on, mm -hmm. they become good friends. Mm -hmm. All right. And Elegy, of course, Will Maher, he has done a lot. All they from they're from Hong Kong, of course. And Nan Guo Long and Li Keqiang from mainland China. These per persons are the key persons mm -hmm. uh, in China. And Zhang Xiaoting, the key person in the education technology communication uh, in, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. My homestay hostess, the late Jenny Johnson, very oh, beautiful oh, person, oh, oh, yeah. beautiful person. When I attended the AECT convention many years ago, he uh, entertained me. Yeah. I went there twice, and she uh, entertained me twice. Very gracious lady. And he invited lady. me a yes. couple, maybe four times as a soccer team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, the yeah. soccer team yeah. sessions. Yeah. I know those, yeah. 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 She invited me, very good, good memory. All these people have been in my good and happy, friendly memory in my mind, mm -hmm. knowing them as my intellectual uh, mentors. Yeah. And Dick Connell is a very interesting person, a very eloquent, uh, what do you call it, eloquent. He has been the best, if, as I have seen so many auction speakers. Yeah. <laughs> the best auction speaker who has brought lots of fun, <laughs> lots of treasure yeah. uh, to us. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like yeah, to yeah, add? Yeah, right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was something loud. I want to know. Uh, I know. I knew you would have something <laughs> like that. Chinese philosophy. <laughs> right. Now I do wish all the AECD community, all the members, all the professors, all the uh, so-called forerunners, young and old, everybody, everybody, uh, having X two O. It means to buy. Uh, to my uh, perception, two H means happy, healthy. Mm -hmm. O means optimistic. Mm. You see, uh -huh. but now there's a Chinese sage, uh, Lao Tzu. He talk about water too. Now, according to Lao Tzu, the Chinese ancient sage, he did a teaching about water. He said, "Water is that." The goodness of water is that it benefits the 10,000 creatures, yet itself does not scramble, but it's content with the places mm -hmm. that all men disdain. It is this that makes water so near the way. Now let's join hands together. We uh, unite together, we stand, divided we fall. Okay. Let's all wish right. uh, our AECT become the big family of all the education, communication, and technology workers. Great. We Great. love each other. All right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, thank you for, for your time.